My name's Lauren, and welcome to Field Pulse. One of the first things you'll want to do after signing on is making sure your Field Pulse account is set up properly. So today in this video, I'm going to be going over the company settings, um, getting your account set up. I encourage you to pause the video, pull up your own account, and follow along. If you have any questions throughout any of the setup process, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at fieldpulse.com. Let's get started. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll want to go ahead and click into the company settings tab. Here under general, this is where you can put in your company information. So key things here is you'll want to make sure you have an email, a good phone number, uh, and you can upload your, your company logo. Just make sure to hit save. Uh, here is where you can um, update credit card information. You can change your subscription plan. So we do have a monthly plan. We have a semi-annual and an annual. Both semi-annual and annual are at a discount. So if you're um, ever wanting to change your subscription, you can do so yourself directly underneath the billing summary. If you have questions about your billing, we do have a billing breakdown as well. So you can see how much you're paying for each user. Um, obviously reach out to us with, with any type of billing questions, but you can do so here under the general tab. Moving into the user accounts. So here's where you can manage all of your users that will be using Field Pulse. Here's where you can add users, you can deactivate users, and you can adjust any information that you might need to. So, I'm going to go ahead and click into Nick. And here over the edit button is where you can make those adjustments. So maybe someone needs to change an email. You can easily do that by erasing it here. You can adjust a phone number. Um, you can adjust the team and the role. You can also change their password for them. So if someone needs to reset it, that's something that you can actually do yourself. It'll send them an email and they'll be able to get logged in. Moving right along, um, not only can you add and deactivate, you can also set up and manage teams. So if your company wants to get organized and really structure um, your users underneath team, so maybe you have a sales team, maybe you have an on-site team, um, or even a front office, you can do so by adjusting that underneath the Teams tab. Going into the features and plugins, so the, the features and plugins is going to showcase every single feature we have that your company um, can enable. We do have a separate video that goes into each one of these, um, takes a deep dive into how they work and if they're a good fit for you. So I encourage you to watch that video after you get your account set up and make sure you have everything enabled that would make the most sense for your company. Moving into customers. So we do have a couple tabs underneath. Um, if you need to import a customer list, this is where you can do so. We do have custom fields. So a custom field lives underneath the contact record or the customer record, if you will. This is if you want to capture anything additional on that customer. So maybe it's a lead source. Um, maybe it is a birthday date. Really, anything additional that you want to capture on each customer that lives in Field Pulse, you can create those individually here. Um, we also have tags. So tags is a great way to organize your customers. You can run reports on these. Here's where you can manage uh, your list of tags. So if you wanted to remove one, maybe you misspelled one, you can manage those through here. Going into the estimates and invoice settings. So we're going to spend a little time here. I think the purpose of setting up your estimates and invoices is really so your company can save time. Please note that everything we're doing here is a default setting. You can adjust this on an individual basis as well, uh, but this is just to um, really help your company save time when you're getting those estimates and, um, and invoices set. So underneath the general tab here, um, you can adjust the invoice number. So if your company has a particular number sequence you're wanting to follow, you can adjust that here. If your company, um, if estimate doesn't align with uh, kind of the naming convention that your company works with, we do have bid, quote, and proposal that you can adjust that to. 
Here's where you can select your currency. If you're in the US, it's going to default to the US. If you are in Australia, New Zealand, it's going to default to um, your, your country. Um, here's where you can put due dates uh, as well as if you'd like to display your logo on the estimate invoices that you're getting sent out. Underneath the advanced tab, this is really where you can get into like the cost basis, who can see invoices, who can't, um, if you wanted to enable a markup. Um, so definitely this is a, on an individual basis per company, everyone's different, but we do give you advanced settings if you'd like to take a look into this. Underneath, underneath the preview settings, this is where you can um, include your company information um, and what's actually shown on the invoices when you get those sent out to customers. Uh, none of this is required, um, but it is available if you guys would like to include it. Um, here is a list of the, the actual settings that we show. Again, like I mentioned, all of this is customizable each time you're setting up an invoice, but if each invoice generally looks the same, this is a great time saver. So here's where you can adjust all of that. Underneath here, you can include customized PDF um, titles for your estimate and invoice. You can include a footnote. So this is either going to go on the bottom of your invoice or right underneath your line items. Um, a lot of people will put thank you for your business. They will include a review link. Um, you can also include your banking information if you'd like. So um, we're here to help if you have questions on any of this. Moving right along to the PDF email settings. So here you have the option, um, whenever you're sending out an estimate invoice, um, you can select a custom or default email address it's coming to. Otherwise, it's gonna default to the person who is actually creating it and sending it to the customer. So you'll notice here, you can adjust that. So here, if you had a, you know, a general support at, you could absolutely designate that email address. Here, you can, um, you can include the estimate and invoice message template. So this is actually the body of the email that you're sending. Um, you can adjust this however you'd like, but again, this is a great time saver. Um, underneath the invoice items here, you can do a bulk import if you have a list that you're already working from. Um, this is a uh, this is where you can essentially manage all of your invoice items. So if you needed to adjust any, if you needed to make any changes to this, uh, underneath company settings, estimates and invoice, invoice items is where you can update this. Same goes for invoices. Um, if you would like to create bundles, you can do so here. Um, contracts, so if you want to include any type of contractual language in your um, estimates and invoices, really anything that you want to get signed by your customer, um, you can actually include those contracts right here. Payments, if you want to get set up with Field Pulse payments, um, very, very simple. It's a way for your customer to, um, or it's a way for your business to accept credit cards. Um, you can do it directly through the app, uh, makes it very, very simple. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to support at fieldpulse.com to get started on that. Um, the other cool thing is the themes. So this is how, um, this is really going to customize your brand um, and your colors uh, to the actual estimates and invoices that you're, uh, you're sending. So if you wanted to create your own theme, you can absolutely do so here. You can see a, an example of what the theme looks like. So if you wanted to select a different color, you could always do that and you can see how that looks. If you wanted to adjust this color, you can adjust this. So really possibilities are completely endless here. Even if you have the specific number sequence of the coloring code you'd like, you can update that here as well. Moving right along to projects. So. I'm going to pause for a second here, and um, as a reminder, we did kind of skip over the features and plugins, but whatever you have enabled in the features and plugins, that's going to show up here. So if your company doesn't utilize projects, you can forward through this, um, but if you have projects enabled, it's going to show up here, as well as customer communication, custom forums, and custom portals. So projects, same thing, you can include a custom field. 
So as a reminder, a custom field is just any additional information you're wanting to capture on the project level. Moving right along to jobs. So if your company, if the naming convention again does not, um, doesn't align with your company, we do have service, project, and work order that you can change that to. If you want to include job templates, so if you do a repeat jobs and you just want to easily insert a job template, you can create those here. A subtask template. So subtask templates are really great if you um, want to include kind of a checklist uh, on a job. So for example, maybe it is an inspection report and you're wanting to list each item or each thing that you're wanting to do and you're wanting to check that off to make sure the, the job or the project is um, you know, everything that you're needing to do is being taken care of. That's where you can do that here. Again, custom fields, tags, same thing. Go and write into customer communications. So one of the incredible things about field polls is we have the ability to send emails, we can send texts, um, and we can also automate that, that customer communication for you. So underneath your uh, company settings under customer communications is where you can set up some of those default templates to you. So you don't have to recreate the emails each time. Um, we have a couple default emails here that you can always work off of, um, but we have a, a part, a appointment confirmation. We have payment templates. So if you want to send reminders on a job, if you want to send a thank you for your, you know, thank you for your business after an invoice is paid, all of this can be created under the email. We also have SMS templates. Um, please note that the SMS is one way. So it's a no reply number. So whenever you're setting up these templates, uh, we always encourage you to include, please call us at and include your business phone number um, for your customer to, to reach you at. Email settings. So again, you can default to a designated email if that makes the most sense for your business. Um, you can display the logo in your email. And then of course we have these automation triggers. So this is if you would like an email to be sent or an SMS to be sent after a job, before a job. Um, we have a number of different triggers you can select from. Um, this is a great way to, um, you know, really kind of customize the communication you're sending. Custom form. So this is if you wanted to um, attach this to a job. Again, this is additional information you're trying to capture. Uh, some good examples is a work order checklist, a, an inspection, a maintenance. So anything that you wanted to capture on a job, this can be easily converted into a PDF, into a work order, however you see fit. And um, we're here to help with, with ideas and best practices. And then last but not least, our customer portal. So the customer portal allows your customers to book a time or to be contacted. It is a link that you can include directly on your website from Field Pulse. Um, we have a couple different options. So if you wanted to allow your customers to contact you, and actually schedule a time for someone to come out, you have this option. If you would like to only give the option of being contacted, you can include just a contact message. Here is where you will copy the URL. Um, this is where you can, um, you, can, you can include this on your website, um, and all of these leads would show up right underneath these requests, and you would be notified here. Um, you can customize um, the language. You can schedule the days when you're available, when you're not, the intervals, um, as well as an automated email to the customer. So you will see all of these requests come here. You'll see the email, phone, address, description, um, and you can actually even create a job directly from these requests. So. That is the um, company settings. I hope uh, you were able to follow along. I hope this was helpful. Um, as I've mentioned a few times now, we are here to help. So if you have any questions, if you want to reach out to schedule a time um, for us to go over this in more depth, please don't hesitate to reach out to support at fieldpulse.com. Thanks so much.